Okay, so welcome back. This is part eight in our ongoing series where we're working to develop a 3D ray tracing application that uses our GPU. I encourage you to look at the previous videos in the series. Um, we talk about a bunch of different aspects of ray tracing and getting together the tools we need to, to do the ray tracing. And um, you may have noticed um, so far that when we're talking about ray tracing, and especially in, in conjunction with C++, it gets really complicated because, you know, with C++, you need to put together all of the tools you need and on the framework and the APIs. And when you're doing ray tracing, there's a lot you need to put together just to get to the point where you can start doing ray tracing. You need math libraries, you need GUI, you need Windows. Um, you need matrices, um, and then you need to understand ray tracing and how that works and all the math associated with it. So it's really, really, really complicated. And unfortunately, that doesn't work well with YouTube. On YouTube, people just want to watch a three-minute video and download free software to play with. Um, but that's not how it works with ray tracing and especially with C++. So um, in spite of that, we're going to move ahead and we're going to look at in this video, one other tool that we can use that you're probably not aware of. Uh, it's a feature of Visual Studio that can help you when you're working with objects, 3D object files, and also images. And it's kind of surprising. Um, I was unaware of it, but um, you can actually bring in 3D objects and edit them inside Visual Studio. So the way I found out about that kind of by accident was I had an object, I've got a, here I've got a, um, a simple C++ application that I use as a sandbox to kind of work on things. And um, I had a, a simple cube I took out of Blender and I wanted to move that into my project, my Visual Studio C++ project. And I just dragged and dropped the file. And what I got after it thought a little bit was I got this. And I was kind of scratching my head saying, wait a minute, why am I looking at my 3D object in Visual Studio? It turns out that there is a tool, a feature in Visual Studio, and I'm using Visual Studio 2022. I'm not sure when this uh, was first introduced, but it allows you to get a visual preview of your object. But much more than that, it allows you to do kind of like what you can do in Blender or other 3D applications, to a very limited extent, you can do a little bit of editing of the object, you can move the object, you can rotate it. Uh, really kind of nice to, as a minimum, if you have an object file in your project, here I've got a, a, a cube.obj. Um, if I want to see what it looks like, I just have to double click on it and I can um, see what it looks like. I can select it. I can rotate around it. Um, I can even select the vertices and edges and everything. So really kind of interesting and might be kind of useful when you're, when you're dealing with objects. It also does the same thing with images. So we'll look at that in a little bit, but it's really um, a nice feature to, to at least be aware of. So here I am in Visual Studio starting creating a new project, and I'm going to pick an empty C++ project. And now we've got a blank project and I'm going to add a uh, main.cpp, add new item, cpp, and I'll just call it main. So now to make sure we've got the, the tool set available, what we're going to do is go up to tools, get tools and features, and we'll go to the Visual Studio installer and it takes a while to get things ready. You can see I'm on Visual Studio 2022. We're going to go to individual components. And we're going to take the scroll bar and go all the way down to where we see games and graphics. And under here, I've already got this installed, but, but you should check image and 3D model editors. Okay. And then close and you should be all set to go. So now I'm going to right click on my project, open folder in file explorer. And here is my folder. And I am going to just drag and drop my OBJ file and my material file into that project. So now I've got it and I can go to show all files 
and update. And you can see it's now showing my main.cpp and then my simple cube object and MTL. Now it's really important um, when you have a .obj file in your project, um, you need to make sure that you have right clicked and done exclude from project so that it has this little red marker with a slash through it. You don't want to include it in the project because uh, Visual Studio gets confused about OBJ files it, and you'll, you'll try to run this and it will say it can't uh, open this OBJ. So make sure it's excluded from the project. Now you can also use film box objects or scenes, FBX, and one other type, but I forget what it is. But um, so now we've got this in our project. Uh, and since we've got that installed, all I need to do is double click on the OBJ file and it will bring up a preview of this object. And you can see here across the top, I've got a bunch of things I can do. And down here, some things I can do, some tools. The first thing is I can select a rectangular area. So if that's selected, I just drag and drop and it selects the whole object. Um, I can, unfortunately my mouse blocks this, but I can, you've got the hand here and I can move. If I left cl click my mouse, I can move around. Um, I can zoom in, left click and move left and right and it zooms. And then I can rotate, left click and rotate around the object. Um, and I'll let you go through and, and um, play with these as you'd like. Um, we're just going to go through a, a few of them. You can now, you can go to point selection mode. So I'll click on that and you can see it highlights these vertices. So I can select this and then I can go up here to translate and you get a, um, a translate uh, XYZ arrow and I can move my vertex. Control Z to get out. I can also go into edge select mode and then face select mode. So I'm going to go into face select mode. Uh, you, apparently you have to double click on that and I can move this. I can move it left and right. Uh, you can also, if you come down here, you can also subdivide and you can extrude that face. So I can click on extrude and it automatically does an extrude and then you can move this to where you want. So um, again, kind of interesting. Um, if nothing else, it allows you to get a preview of your object. I can click on this and I can hit subdivide and I can hit extrude and it will extrude it out. So if you don't want to go to the trouble of firing up Blender, you can do a little bit of editing in your um, Visual Studio. Now you can do also do the same with images. So I've opened up my project folder in File Explorer and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop a JPEG into my project. And if I refresh, you can see now I have city.jpg in my project. So I can double click on that. Yes, I will accept it. And here I've got my image in Visual Studio. And here you've got a bunch of things you can do. I can draw a line. I can uh, use brush strokes, uh, airbrush, um, basically a lot of the basic tools that you can get in something like GIMP and um, you can modify your image. So I can draw a box. I can draw whatever I want. Um, so it's, it's a nice set of tools just to know that they're there in case you need to use them for whatever. So in the next video, we're going to address one of the other uh, issues we found with uh, what we did previously with the scratch a pixel code. Um, it's using a um, custom object file format. Um, and they did that to make it a little bit easier so they don't have to do a lot of parsing. But that's not going to work for us. We want to be able to import or load a um, industry standard file format for 3D files, which is a .obj, a wavefront ob object file, um, so that we can build something in Blender and then we can import it into our um, Visual Studio project. So in the next video, we're going to look at how we can do that and integrate that with the code we got from Scratch a Pixel that's using their custom importer. We're going to use a generic importer and try and include that in our project. 
So if you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications, and most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get more than 20 views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.